We all know that Albert Einstein was a genius, and his brain can work more than a thousand scientists. Things that we can never thought of, he worked on them and made them easy for the whole world. Albert Einstein was a physicist who published the theory of special relativity, E is equals to mc squared, and formulating the photoelectric laws, and therefore he was awarded by the Nobel Prize. Seeing his extraordinary thinking and understanding power, people believed that Einstein had an extraordinary brain that was quite different from an ordinary human brain. And Einstein also knew this. That's why he did not want his body to be researched after his death. He had instructed that his body, and especially brain, will be cremated after his death. But the same thing happened that Einstein was afraid of. On 13 April 1955, Albert Einstein died in Princeton Hospital. The doctor, who came to perform the autopsy, stole the Einstein's brain secretly. He was curious to know what was inside the brain of this genius. The doctor who stole Einstein's brain was Dr. Thomas Harvey who was more interested in studying this brain than facing the consequences. When the Princeton Hospital came to know about this incident, they fired him. But Dr. Harvey was successful in convincing Hans Albert, who was son of Albert Einstein, to give him permission to conduct research on his father's brain and let the world know about it. From that day, a long journey started for that brain. Dr. Harvey was a pathologist who knew only about post-mortem, and that's why he believed that he would be able to research this brain. But the situation was that Dr. Harvey lost his job at Princeton Hospital. So Harvey took Einstein's brain to Pennsylvania, where he took a lot of photos of the brain and cut the brain into 240 small pieces. And after preserving every piece in separate jars, he hide all of them in his basement. During the research, he had arguments with his wife and his wife used to threaten him that she will throw this brain outside. The arguments eventually lead to divorce and Harvey went to Kansas with the brain where he started working as a medical supervisor. He frequently switched jobs and moved to different cities. Even after many years, Dr. Harvey could not do any solid research on Einstein's brain. Instead, his medical license was canceled and the situation was so bad for him that he had to start working in a plastics factory. At that time, he made a good decision to send different pieces of the brain to the best neurologist in the world for detailed research. Many neurologists published several studies on this brain, where it was found that Einstein's brain was quite different from the ordinary human brain. The biggest difference was found in the corpus callosum part. It is important to know that human brain is divided into two parts. The left brain controls the right portion of the body, whereas the right brain controls the left portion of the body. Now, you must be thinking, what is the work of the corpus callosum? Imagine you are typing on the keyboard, and while doing this, our both hands are busy in typing. If your left hand made a mistake and you quickly use your right hand to erase that mistake, the link through which both halves of the brain are connected is called the corpus callosum. And Einstein's corpus callosum was larger than ordinary humans. That means his left brain and the right brain had a strong connection. Einstein could imagine complex problems and situations easily because of larger corpus callosum. Apart from the difference in the corpus callosum, Einstein's brain's pattern was also quite different from others. Researchers believe that it is the reason for good neuron flow. A good flow of neurons means that he had great power for mathematical calculations. Albert Einstein had the power to solve complex mathematical problems in his mind. According to a research paper, another reason for having a high number of neurons was that when Einstein's brain was weighed, it was 1230 grams compared to 1400 grams for normal human beings. Researchers believe that his brain's lining was quite thin, because of which it contained more neurons. But the biggest question is, was Einstein born with such a special brain? It was found that when Einstein was born, he started speaking after the age of five, while other children start speaking at the age of two or three. Even after he started speaking, he did not like to speak much and remain lost in his own thoughts. He was a master at processing math and numbers in logical ways rather than memorizing them in his school life. He failed in other subjects, but he excelled in mathematics and science. When Albert Einstein was 12 years old, a family teacher left his geometry book in Einstein's house. Surprisingly, Einstein read that book in one day and cleared his all geometric concepts. Not only that, he became a master of integral and differential calculus at the age of 14. 
His grip on math and science was so strong that professors used to become nervous when he used to raise his hands for asking questions. From a very young age, he wanted to encapsulate the laws of the universe in a small equation, and this became his life's mission. At the age of 26, Einstein published four research papers and surprised the world. He was given a PhD degree and awarded by the Nobel Prize for playing an outstanding role for humanity. Many doctors and scientists came to the conclusion that Einstein's brain became special after his birth. The biggest reason behind it was that when he could not find an answer to his questions, he tried to find answers with the help of his brain. Doing so from a young age developed his brain. Today, Einstein's brain is kept in America's Mutter Museum, where it is preserved with great care on microscopic slides.